Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen. By popular request, a separate video on the motor controllers that I build to control the treadmill motors that run most of the machines in the Aussie Shed. So sit back and relax, and I'll walk you through the process of assembling a DC motor controller that you can use to control all your DC treadmill motors in your home workshop. And here we go. This is a breakdown of the DC motor controllers that I put together to control the treadmill motors that are running most of the equipment in the Aussie shed. This is your main component. This is an SCR AC motor controller. It has a uh, potentiometer mounted on the front. I'll just slide that cover off there. You can see it just uh, has two wires that run to it that clip into the board there. Nothing much to this. It's basically just that fixed onto a big aluminium heatsink. If you choose to have this potentiometer mounted in a different position uh, on your machine, if it doesn't work out right, I usually just see that if the wires aren't long enough, just snip it, uh, solder in some wire and move the thing to wherever you want. In the belt disc sander conversion that I've done, I've actually trimmed down this heatsink as well, uh, just to make it fit in the box. It's quite a big beefy heatsink. I've never noticed them getting even warm, so uh, cutting them down is not a real problem. The other component that makes all this work is a bridge rectifier. Uh, this converts your AC signal to DC. You can see the, uh, the part number on it there. Just bring that up. Focus, baby, come on. Okay, now they're really the two main components. That's really all there is to it. Uh, this is AC in, AC out and you run the AC out line into your bridge rectifier and then you run the outputs from your bridge rectifier into your DC motor. So let's have a look at how we do that. And in this application, like just about all the others, I generally run an LED light just to know that we've got power on uh, because if your potentiometer is turned off and the motor controller is live, you don't really realize unless you have something that tells you. This is just an AC mains powered uh, LED light you just drill a hole for them, put them in and wire them up and away you go. So let's have a look at the connections on the SCR controller. You have in, out and com. In is your mains active in, so either the red or the brown wire. Com is your neutral connection. Now this is your neutral in and out. And out is your active out. So you've got active in, neutral in, active out, neutral out. So there will be two neutral wires going into the COM connection. Uh, one is the AC input and the other is the AC output on the neutral side. And then active in, active out. I'll, uh, I'll get some wires in there so you can get a, bit, a better idea of what I'm talking about. As you can see here, I have a, a power lead and you can see coming out of there, you've got your active, which is your brown, neutral, which is blue, earth, which is green. Now you can see I've got a wire connected onto there. I've got a red wire onto the brown, which is our active, and I'll have a black wire onto the blue, which is our neutral, and green with a yellow stripe, or yellow with a green stripe depending on which side of it you're on, which is our earth. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm also wiring in a power on light, which is gonna be the second wire that's connected on the active side. There's two wires here. One of them is the active coming in from the mains, and the other is the wire that goes, as you can see here, goes to the active side of this light. So we'll just slip that into the in, which remember is your active in. Tighten it down. Now your active out is the next one across that's in the center there, the connection that's labeled out. That is your output. So another, another red wire, remember that's your active. And we'll just put that one in there. And that's the output that will go to the AC connection on the bridge rectifier. 
Now for our com wire, this is where all of your neutrals join together. So all the black wires, uh, I've got three wires here. One is the neutral in from the power cord. One is the neutral out, which goes to the other side of the bridge rectifier. And the third black wire is the neutral side of our lamp. So if you don't have a lamp, you'll only have two. You'll have a neutral in, neutral out. But if you're wiring a lamp in here, you'll have three. That's all our connections made. I'll just pan back so you can kind of see everything connected in. So as you can see here, this is our mains input. You can see the red wire from here traces through and goes into the in on the left there. It happens to be joined with another active wire which is going to this lamp. Out, which is the center connection, goes out to one of these connectors here, which will one of these connectors here, which will be going to the bridge rectifier. And on the neutral side, which is your com, you have a a neutral connected to your neutral wire from your uh, mains power in, which runs into the com connection. There's also a neutral for your lamp, and then a neutral out, which is this guy here which runs to the bridge rectifier. To make the connection to your bridge rectifier, the connection marked AC, I generally just put the active. Now, bridge rectifiers run diagonally, and that's very important to remember. So your, other, your neutral AC terminal goes diagonally opposed to it in such a fashion. Okay, so remember you have AC, which is your output from the SCR. Diagonally opposed to it, you have the neutral output from the SCR, and that's your AC output. So at this stage, you've got AC in, AC out, coming out through here into the bridge rectifier, and then the what comes out of these two terminals will be DC. Now the two wires that you can connect onto your treadmill motor here, uh, it doesn't matter which way they are connected, uh, all that will do is reverse the polarity, which will reverse the rotation of your treadmill motor. So if when you connect it, it's spinning the wrong way, all you have to do is reverse these two connections and it will turn the other way. So we'll just plug these guys in, no particular way. As I said, depending on uh, the way that they're plugged in, it really just governs the rotation of the DC motor. At this point, you can see the, the plus marked side, which is opposite the AC marking. I have the, uh, the red output wire on too. Now, the other thing I haven't talked about here is earth connections. You can see I've got an earth coming from, uh, from our mains. Um, generally, when I wire these in, I will drill a hole in the side of the SCR and attach an earth connection to it and then loop back to the motor, which you can see uh, on here. It has three wires coming out of the back of it, active, neutral and earth connections. When I fit these to any machines, I generally tend to run a lot of earths. I will earth the motor controller, uh, the body of the machine, the control box, uh, Anything that I possibly can run an earth wire to that's metallic, I will run an earth wire to. You can never have too many earth wires. Reason being, if something goes wrong, it's the path of least resistance for the power to go to ground. So if you're not running earth wires, if you have stuff that's not earthed and it becomes live and you touch it, you become the earth wire, which is how you get electrocuted. So remember, earth wires everywhere, starting from your your mains power in to here to the motor to everything remember you can just loop this wherever you want just cut it join them together with proper connectors or solder them uh, remember you must have lots of earth connections and i'll demonstrate all the earth connections that i have on the disc belt sanding machine in just a second so basically that's all there is to it um, so we've got 
power comes in light just to let us know that we're on Britanniometer to govern motor, motor speed bridge rectifier to convert from AC output to DC output wired into the treadmill motor I'll just set this up so we can see what's going on there we go I'll just hit the power switch the orange light should come on like so we now have power I'll just turn the uh, potentiometer here and as you'll see just like that we have power to the motor which we can just turn up and down as we please just like that and that's all there is to it very very simple indeed once again you really should have a switch in from your ac before you start going into anything that's where your power switch is located where these terminals are here i currently don't have a spare power switch that i can wire in to show you otherwise i would but i'll show you on the uh, the belt disc sander uh, it has a switch in that position that's the mag where i put the magnetic switches yeah that's all there is to it as you can see it's very very simple 10,000 watt scr motor controller bridge rectifier light if you need it i highly recommend using a light just so that you know the thing's live and you're good to go in australia our dc motors are 180 volts in the us i think they're a little bit less and from what i've seen on youtube guys are having to change out this potentiometer for a different value uh, in the us when they do these conversions but for here in australia if, you know we've got say 230 volts coming out of the wall the treadmill motors here are 180 volt dc and it's a it's a fairly good match um, obviously when this is running flat stick uh, your output is still going to be 220 230 volts so you're actually going to be overdriving the dc motor a bit but i honestly never run them full speed there's just really no need to do it i generally gear them in such a fashion that they're running at probably three quarter speed when they're going flat out which is probably about you know feeding it probably about 180 volts at that point anyway yeah it's just a very simple way to do it i've been doing them like this for quite a long time i've uh, as you've seen in a lot of my other videos every machine in the shed runs a treadmill motor the same motor controllers run them whether it's the big dual press conversion the belt disc sander the bandsaw they are just really really simple scr motor controllers cost about i think they're about 10 bucks us the bridge rectifiers they're like less than a dollar they're like 50 cents the lights are only a couple of bucks it really is just cheap as chips to put these motor controllers together i'll turn this off and then i'll go and give you a demonstration on the belt disc sander which everything is all properly wired in like as i was saying about the earths all the earths have been run everywhere and uh, it's all just neat and tidy and you can see what it looks like all in position she's all in there and for this particular situation what i've done is fitted a double power point to the outside of this box uh, box being just a cheap ebay plastic enclosure fitted with all the uh, particular gear that's the new magnetic switch safety switch as i mentioned before give her a bang and she's done very safe indeed and as i mentioned it's magnetic i'll just flick the power off over here excuse me i've just got to get in front of the light to get to the switch flick him off as you can see i'll flick him back on nothing because the magnetic switch has deactivated it very nice indeed and this is what the whole thing looks like when it's all said and done you can see what we have here is our our power running in which is this behind there you can see that red flex cable that's your power coming in in this situation it's looped into a power point runs back out into the switch which is here hit the switch power then runs back into the motor controller exactly the same motor controller 
that we were just looking at on the bench. As you can see, I've cut the heat sink down to allow it to mount in this box. I've only trimmed a little bit off it, it's all good. Another thing I didn't mention, the bridge rectifier, I've actually mounted it onto the heat sink as well because they do uh, get a little bit hot. So I've just put some heat sink compound on the back of it. They have a hole through the center, so I've just run a, uh, a self tapper, I think, through it or a bolt, not sure which now, and just fixed it to the heat sink. It just makes it all nice and neat. So this is wired up in, ex in exactly the same way as I just demonstrated on the bench. The output from the bridge rectifier then runs back through into uh, into this other flex that then runs through the machine and over to the motor. Just over here, I have a small junction box, which is where the output power is coming from the motor controller, and that's just waiting to be connected up to the treadmill motor when she's affixed. Now you can see all the earth wires. There's a hole drilled in the side of the, uh, the AC motor controller box, which has an earth connected to it. And there's another earth connected in the back there, which earths the cabinet. And then there's another earth wire that runs through with the flex, which uh, goes to the motor and also earths the motor base out. So yeah, that's the whole unit there. As I mentioned, I've put a power point on here as well. When the machine's plugged in, that power point becomes active. It's not switched with the emergency stop here. Uh, I could have switched it quite easily that way by running the, the power input to the switch first and then to the power point. I've actually done it the other way, power point first and then to the switch and then out to the motor controller. And what I did with the previous stand was I used to use it to mount uh, bench grinders and things on as well. Because it's on wheels, I can push it outside when you're doing those sort of dirty, horrible jobs, it's really great to have something that you can wheel outside and do it. So uh, once this is plugged in and you can see I've got a nice long lead on it, I can then mount a bench grinder on it and, uh, and then just plug that in here. And, uh, and whatever tool I plug in will have its own safety switch anyway. So I might plug this sucker in, eh? And then just give you a bit of a demo. Hit the power, turn the pretendiometer, and you can hear the motor kick up, which is over here, running happily. Very nice indeed. And that's about all there is to it, folks, other than the obligatory warning sticker to keep the uninitiated away from such a dangerous machine. I'll leave links in the description for all of the components to make up your own motor controller. They're just eBay links. The components are cheap and easily available. I hope some of you have found this video helpful to enable you to make your own motor controllers up. Uh, I find the treadmill motors are just absolutely fantastic. I use treadmill motors with these motor controllers in most of the machinery in the Aussie shed here. So as always, thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>